I guess maybe even though it's a tutorial type question, maybe it's worth uh, worth doing. Uh, so let me actually work through that. So I'm just gonna write on the screen here and I will um, type in the answers here. And one thing I want to have handy as I'm starting is I want to have um, the, the textbook sections <laughs> handy because there are some formulas that um, I don't bother memorizing. And I also don't really recommend that you put in a lot of effort into memorizing. So the question says, a spaceship is heading directly toward Earth at a velocity of some speed. Oh, I, I need to start drawing stuff just for my own benefit. Uh, let me do it this way. I'll reserve a corner of this space for drawing stuff. And I think in the black background, if I choose white pens in Zoom, it'll show. Uh, or at least the light colored pens. Um, so I have a uh, Earth, and here's a spaceship that's coming towards Earth. Oh, I don't know how to draw a spaceship. It's my spaceship. It's coming towards Earth at the speed of uh, 0.86 C. Okay, that seems pretty high. <laughs> um, and compare predictions of Galilean relativity and special relativity. Uh, Galilean relativity is uh, the intuitive kind of relativity that a lot of you would have guessed without me telling you explicitly. So uh, in part A, if the astronaut launches a canister toward the Earth, so something uh, canister towards Earth, and in the reference frame of the astronaut or spaceship, it's moving at speed of 0.6 C, then you would say, according to Galilean relativity, that this should move at uh, 0 0.86 plus 0 0.6. So 1.46 um, C toward Earth. That's what Galilean relativity would predict. And I, I think from last week, you do know that this answer is wrong. That it, um, <laughs> I, from even from what we covered the last week, I think you should uh, begin to see that something having speed faster than speed of light in vacuum is uh, something that will uh, mess up your math, <laughs> because even the just the vector gamma has um, this quantity in it, one over square root of one minus beta squared. So if this beta is ever larger than one, then you have imaginary stuff going on with the gamma. So, um, so I hope you see even from the get-go that the Galilean prediction it cannot possibly be right. So. So this is exact same scenario, but according to special relativity, how fast will it move towards Earth? Um, so this is where I need to look up the formula and why I had the textbook handy. So um, so I have Lorentz transformation memorized. I don't need the textbook sections to write down Lorentz transformation, but this quantity of velocity, it doesn't transform quite according to Lorentz transformation. It transforms according to uh, the relativistic velocity transformation rule, um, which is based on Lorentz transformation. But the reason it doesn't look like a Lorentz transformation is, I, I think I was talking about earlier this way, that velocity is not a four vector. It's not a kind of directional quantity that uh, directly obeys the rules of um, Lorentz transformation. So, so the the final formula just ends up looking ugly. So, you know, this is the Lorentz transformation. I do have that memorized. And when you combine it into something that forms a, the quantity of velocity, then the end result you get is not something that you would. Uh, call uh, for uh, components of four vector. So anyways, um, this is the formula we have to deal with. <laughs> um, so the X is the component that's a parallel to the, the velocity of your reference frame. And most of the times we'll just be dealing with that. Uh, y and Z are the components that are perpendicular. And uh, so I do want you to know where the formula is so that if uh, ever a question asks you to um, do something with the perpendicular components of velocity, then you know where to find it. Um, but otherwise we'll just stick to this. And um, depending on how you order these primes and unprimed, unprimed quantities, there's a, a difference of sign here. This is either plus or minus. Um, I'm just gonna go with my gut and um, 
say <laughs> and write down what seems correct according to my gut. Because you know, if I ever get a number that's smaller than 0.86C, then my intuition will tell me that that's not right. Uh, whatever speed this is moving at in the Earth frame, um, so whatever this uh, happens to be moving at, in the Earth frame, it um, it should be at least greater than 0 0.86c. So um, I, I think I will get a number greater than this if I just use this plus a sign. So let me just plug in the numbers. Um, so I have, um, so U prime X is the speed of this thing within this frame. So that's a 0 0.6. See, I, I, I'm not gonna write down all the C's. This will just work themselves out. So 0 0.6 plus V is the speed of the reference frame. That would be 0 0.86, 0 0.86, six. Okay, that's the numerator. Let me divide it by the denominator, parenthesis, one plus 0 0.86 times 0 0.6. And I'm ignoring all the C's because I know they will just cancel out and uh, not give cause any problem. Okay, that it, uh, so parenthesis closed, that's the value in the parenthesis. Say equals, I get 0 0.963. And it passes to two checks that I would insist on, that it should be smaller than C, <laughs> nothing moves faster than speed of light. And it's also bigger than 0 0.86C. And, um, and when, you, when I submit question, um, that, those are the answers. Um, so, so yeah, it, this is a quick comparison of the different predictions of the Newtonian mechanics, which uses Galilean relativity versus the special relativity, which, uh, which holds fast to, to the postulate that speed of light is constant in all reference frames. That's our starting point. When things contradict each other, uh, we hold on to the second postulate of special relativity. So yeah, so both the results might sound equally plausible. You just use two different formulas. However, according to both the theory and experiment, laws of nature need to work out in such a way that object moving at 1C moves at 1C in all reference frames. So this is what I was basing it on. So if you imagine the astronaut <laughs> launching a massless particle or just shining light at 1C, then if we continue to use the rules of Galilean relativity, then the answer here, so, so I'm imagining replacing this um, 0 0.6C with something that moves at 1C in the spaceship's reference frame. And if I continue to use Galilean relativity, I'll get an answer that says the particle now moves at 1.86C. And that's wrong. I get a result that says light moves at 1.86C, and that's wrong. And uh, if you go through this formula and plug in the numbers, you will get the answer is one. <laughs> yeah, you can just correct, guess the correct answer to the, uh, do plug in the numbers for yourself. Um, I, I won't because I've done that in the past and I know what the answer will come out to be. Um, so, so if we hold on to the second postulate of special relativity, then, um, then it has to be this, uh, even this weird rule, which comes from Lorentz transformation, this has to be correct, not the more intuitive Galilean relativity.